Hello everyone, Fox here, and it's time to talk about skills again. This time, all four of the wits skills. As I explained in the fighting skills video, you can buy these retraining manuals for 1500 influence from a mysterious trader that appears on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. And that will allow you to reset one of your specializations and unlock all four of the options instead of whatever options they had organically the first time you leveled them. Up. This lets us customize our character's skills into whatever combination we want. And because it can be a bit of a pain to get the retraining manuals, it pays to know what the skills do ahead of time. So we're going to take a look at all four of the skills, see what they do, do a few experiments, and then I'll try to tell you which one I think is the best, which I believe will be fairly difficult because these skills are very subtle and it's difficult to say which one is really the best. So let's get started. The four wit skills are resourcefulness, stealth, scouting, and discipline. By default, the seven stars in the base wit skill give you 35% faster searching speed when you're looting, so that won't be added to any of the stats of these advanced skills. Why don't we get started with resourcefulness? This is, I guess you'd call the generic advanced skill because it should always be an option. Whenever you level up organically, resourcefulness should always be at least one of the options. That doesn't mean it's necessarily bad though. Let's see what it does. When maxing it out, you'll get plus one inventory slots, plus three max consumable stack size, minus 70% to consumable items weight that you're carrying, and a new feature that was added to it is increased crossbow bolt recovery odds. So resourcefulness is a very flexible skill, which requires a little bit of creativity on your part to make the most out of. The plus one inventory slot is your character's base inventory. You could consider it like your pockets or something. It is separate from the backpack that you're equipping. And as you can see here, this character has three slots down below where another character only has two. The plus three max consumable stack size refers to things like snacks, medical items, and other disposable items like grenades. It's not going to increase the stack size of things like ammunition because they're not consumable. This is pretty useful for selling items that are consumables. For example, in my influence guide, I said you could sell fuel bombs at a decent profit, and this would allow you to effectively double your capacity for carrying them because they would stack in groups of six instead of three. The minus 70% consumable weight bonus, that's really just kind of thrown in there as just an extra quality of life improvement. It's unlikely to really play a crucial role in any particular strategy. But the increased crossbow bolt recovery did warrant some experimentation. I took a character out with no ammunition, just what was in my repeating crossbow, so 10 bolts, and I went and killed 10 zombies to see how many bolts I would recover. And then I did the same thing again, but this time with a character that had resourcefulness, killed 10 zombies to see what I would recover. The character without resourcefulness got seven crossbow bolts back from the 10 zombies, while the character that did have resourcefulness got all 10 of the bolts back. This doesn't mean that resourcefulness guarantees bolt recovery, but the percentage is pretty high. And while it's true that the crossbow bolts aren't hard to produce, what it does mean is that you can go a longer amount of time before completely running out of ammunition and having to either return to a base or an outpost to get more. In the end, resourcefulness, it might not seem like it's a mind-blowing skill, but that's because none of them are mind-blowing. I'd say it's worth it to have at least one community member with resourcefulness, and maybe more if you enjoy using crossbows and if you plan to sell stackable consumable items. But let's move on into the stealth ability. This gives you minus 35% enemy sight range, minus 50% chance of a search crash, faster stealth kills, sprinting while crouched, and silently open locked doors while crouched. Those are a whole lot of features, so let's get right into what they do. The sight range refers to how close you can get to an enemy before they detect you while crouching. Let's compare the difference here. This character has stealth, and I basically have to get right in front of the zombie for it to detect me. So it's pretty effective. Here's a character that doesn't have stealth, and I'm going to crouch, and while you can still get fairly close to a zombie while crouching, you'll definitely notice that it can see you at a much further range. 
The next skill is the minus 50% chance of a search crash. That refers to when you're looting something and you do a fast loot. There's always a chance that you'll make a whole lot of noise and get some zombies, and this just reduces the probability of that happening. Then there's the quick stealth kills. This occurs whenever you do a from behind while crouched execution. And you can see when you don't have this skill, it takes a little while. You gotta either grapple with them or you stab them in the side of the head and you drag them down. But if you have stealth maxed out and you have quick stealth kills, you just do a quick jab into the side of their neck and their head pops. It's drastically more effective. Sprint while crouching does exactly what it says it does. Let's you sprint while you're sneaking around. This has synergy with the cardio skill Marathon, which allows you to sprint for no stamina usage as long as you're in a light carry capacity. So you'll be able to sprint while crouched without using any stamina if you've got both of these skills and you're in light carry. Lastly, we have the ability to silently open locked doors. You know, every now and then you'll run into those doors that you have to bash open. Well, this allows you to just crouch and then open it and the door just opens like that. No need to make any noise. So what do I think about stealth? Well, despite being a big fan of stealth games like Metal Gear Solid, I have to say stealth is probably the worst skill. And the reason for that is simply because it's fun, and if you enjoy stealth, I highly recommend it. However, it's just not necessary, and it doesn't really grant you big benefits. And that's because readily accessible long-range stealth options are always available in the game. A crossbow or just a weapon with a silencer is a lot more effective at removing zombies quietly than sneaking around and stabbing them. Really, the problem with stealth is that the game isn't difficult enough to reward stealth gameplay. The advantage to it would be to save ammunition, to save durability on your melee weapons by efficiently killing enemies. But there's no need for that because ammunition and parts to repair weapons are plentiful. So what you're really doing in the end is just inefficiently spending your time unless you just really enjoy the stealth gameplay, which is why I always have somebody with stealth because sometimes I just like sneaking around and stabbing people, even if it's not very efficient. Now let's talk about scouting. This gives you plus 45 meters enemy detection range, plus 70% container visibility range, minus 25% gun durability loss per shot, and all containers are revealed when indoors. So scouting is basically the ultimate quality of life pick. It's entirely geared towards making the game smoother, but not necessarily easier in terms of combat. The increased enemy detection range will put the enemy on your minimap so that you can detect them at a farther range. This is handy at night inside of a building where it's dark and you could get ambushed. Well, you'll be able to see them ahead of time now on the map. The 70% container visibility range allows you to see the lootable icon on any lootable container further away. And if we combine this with the all containers are revealed when indoors, you'll be able to see them through the walls all over the house. You won't have any trouble finding them. You just walk into a building and you can instantly see pretty much all of the containers. You will waste no time at all searching for them and you'll never be ambushed by zombies because you detect them. You can see here the outdoors container range. You still need to have line of sight, so if something is obscuring your vision, it won't show up. But that goes all out the window when you are inside of a building. You basically get loot x-ray vision. You'll be able to see the basic direction of where all of the loot is. It will quickly cut down on the time it takes for you to locate everything, while simultaneously protecting you from ambush by letting you know if there are any zombies lurking inside the building, or if any are being drawn towards the noise you're creating. Overall, even though scouting doesn't really improve your ability to fight zombies, I think it still makes a really good argument for being a standard wits choice. And that's because it just makes the game so much more enjoyable, so much smoother to play. At the least, I would suggest having one or two community members with scouting if you want to make them your designated looters. Finally, let's move on to Discipline, which is unique for being the only skill in the Wits category that does have a direct and accessible improvement on your combat ability. It gives you plus 30 light carry limit, minus 25% durability loss per hit on melee weapons, plus 24 max stamina, and plus 5 stamina gain on melee kill. So what do these do? Well, the plus 30 light carry extends the amount of weight that you can carry 
carry before you transition from light carry into medium carry. This is not the same thing as expanding your total carry capacity though. You will still enter heavy carry at the same amount of weight. The durability reduction per hit on melee weapons is worth noting that if you're choosing close combat you won't gain the benefit from that since you're not encouraged to use a melee weapon with durability to begin with. On the other hand it is pretty useful for sword play and just bladed weapons in general as they tend to have a lower durability than blunt weapons on average. The plus 24 max stamina is noteworthy for actually being higher than the cardio skill which is strange since you would expect to get the most of your stamina from that but they should stack. And lastly we have the stamina gain on melee kill. It can be a little hard to notice the effect on this in the middle of combat because you may be constantly killing enemies and constantly using up stamina so you don't really get to see that little plus five refund of stamina when you actually do get a kill but observe I'm going to kill a few of these enemies and I'm going to try to isolate them so that you can see that little quick bump up in stamina right after you kill them. You can see it right here that just little pop of stamina right up after you kill an enemy and that is that five stamina refund which actually will make a difference in a long drawn out battle combined with the bonus max stamina on top of it. Overall, this is the only real wit skill that improves your ability to fight zombies directly, so it could also be argued that this is the best skill as a result. However, the bonuses aren't so out of this world that you absolutely have to have them. You could easily make an argument for scouting if you say, you know what, my combat capability is already more than good enough. I want to find loot easier. So once again, it's really up to you. And that brings us to the conclusion. What do I think about the skills overall. So to be honest, three of the four skills are pretty good, but really two of them shine more than the others. The only skill that I think is bad is stealth, not because I don't think it's a cool skill, but rather because it just doesn't really fit into the way that you play State of Decay right now. Maybe if they increase the difficulty and make resources scarcer, it will become more valuable. But as it currently stands, it's just there to create a new alternate way to play the game at the expense of playing efficiently. And to be honest, since State of Decay really isn't that hard of a game, there's more than an argument to make a decision like this to prefer fun over strict efficiency. After stealth, I would probably say resourcefulness is the next lowest rated ability. And that's because you either need to be a crossbow enthusiast or someone who plans to sell stackable, consumable items to take advantage of its abilities. Lastly, out of scouting and discipline, these are the two skills that I would say are the best. It's really hard for me to say which one is strictly better. It really depends on whether or not you care about having an even further bonus in hand-to-hand -hand combat. I do not. I do just fine without discipline. So for me, I would say that scouting is the best ability, the best general everyday ability you could slap on any character. But you might not give a crap about looting things a bit faster. You might want to eke out as much power as you can to fight the zombies, which is where discipline would be better. You can probably see what I mean though, that these skills are a bit harder to classify because what they do is very subtle. It's not like rating something on a scale of 1 to 10 where 7 is a lot different than 5. This is more like rating something between 0 and 1 where you're going by decimals. Like is 0.7 a whole lot different than 0.5? That's how I feel about these skills overall. But hey, those are the skills and I guess on the bright side is that it's harder to make a poor decision since they're all fairly similar. That's going to do it for this though. Like this video if it was helpful or informative. Subscribe to my channel for future Save K2 content and of course remember that you don't have to be good to get good.